Today I'm back with my Porsche 914 race car. Since the last time you saw this car, I tightened up the shift linkage and that seemed to get me all the gears. I also disconnected the old battery that was in it and connected up one of my ultra capacitors. That seems to start the engine really well. So I think this car is ready to put on a dyno and see how it does. I don't remember the exact numbers off the top of my head, so I'll show them on the screen. But I'm hoping that the engine dynos somewhere in between what the 914 with the fuel injected engine made originally and under what the most powerful 911 that was sold that used this same transaxle. I don't want to exceed the horsepower that that 911 made by a very big margin because that means that we are going to be pushing the amount of power going into the transaxle too far. So I'm hoping that the power is going to fall in between the most powerful 911 that used this same transaxle and be above what the 914 made originally. Let's get it on the dyno and find out. To remind you, or in case you didn't see the first video, this Porsche now has a small block Chevy, made it up to the original transaxle. The exhaust comes right out of the back here. This car has never been on the dyno, so we have no idea what to expect for power from this. But the biggest thing that I'm concerned about is the angle on these axles here. Let me get up here where you can really see that. The axles, I think, are going to be the weak link. And will this even survive being put onto the dyno? I hope these don't go flying across the room. Okay, as you saw, this thing was a little grumpy. It was backfiring at times. I don't know if you can see that, but it looks like some sort of liquid. 
Feels like oil got sprayed down here. Not sure where that was coming from. Saw some smoke coming off, probably burning off of the exhaust as this car has never really been driven before. Let's go take a look at the results. Okay, we see the torque and horsepower coming up over here. This little dip is where the carburetor coughed and horsepower was coming up. Looks like we did pretty much reach peak horsepower. Uh, says over here, 217 horsepower and 244 torque. I'm probably not able to find a spec on it, but the torque of the V8 might be what would kill this gearbox and not the horsepower. But we are well above anything that Porsche ever put through that gearbox. But at least we're closer to that 200 number and not the 300 number. I did rev the engine up to 5,500 RPM. Again, this is probably the first time the engine's been revved like that, at least under a load. So I didn't want to explode everything to bits right off the go. But it was making its maximum horsepower at 5,100 RPM. So we well exceeded where it was making its maximum horsepower. Being just 17 horsepower over what you should probably be putting through this transaxle, I feel pretty good about this car. However, you are not going to find the gears very quickly with the way that the linkage is set up currently. Even on the dyno where I had all the time in the world, finding the correct gear was a bit of a challenge. There are some leaks that are going to need addressed. You can see it dripping on the drum there. Oh yeah, you can see it on the back of the engine here. A lot of oil coming down right through here. So I probably don't want to run this again today. I want to fix some of these issues oils all the way up here uh, actually there's a bunch of oil pulled up over here looks like it might be coming from this ridiculous oil pressure sending adapter set up here there is a lot of rtv around that Let's hope that that's what it is and not the intake gasket. That's gonna be it for today. You probably saw on the dyno that the rear end of the car was going up and down. That's probably because of two reasons. One, that the tires are flat spotted for this car sitting for 10 years. And two, the wheels have been raced on quite a bit and they're just steel wheels. So they might be dented from hitting rumble strips and things like that. This type of wheel is normally meant for dirt racing and you don't see these on a lot of road race cars. They are very, very heavy wheels, and obviously they also dent pretty easily. That shouldn't have affected any of the dyno results, but I think if the car was driven a bunch more and had good fuel going through it, it probably would turn even better numbers, but I think this gives us a really good close approximation of how much power we're going to see going through those axles and the transaxle. I don't know what to do next with this car, so if you have any suggestions, make those in the comments below. And if you want to see more videos with this car, be sure to click the subscribe button.